Hello everybody and thank you for watching. My name is Carrie, and today I will be introducing a series of videos on how to tackle Sudoku puzzles. This will be an introductory video geared for players who have never played Sudoku or who have played them but have up to this point found them to be a bit daunting. Hopefully after this video is complete you'll be persuaded to try out some of the solving techniques I will discuss in this video. But for now I will discuss the basics on what a Sudoku puzzle is and I'll also do a quick walkthrough on how to solve a Sudoku puzzle. The particular puzzle I will be working with in this video was pulled from the website crazydad.com. That's crazy spelled with a K. Before we get started, let's go over the rules. A Sudoku is a 9x9 grid that is 9 rows and 9 columns, and each little square is called a cell. Some cells already have numbers in them, while others are blank. Sudokus also have thick lines dividing the grid into smaller 3x3 three three boxes, and the goal of the Sudoku is to fill in all of the remaining blank cells with the digits 1 through 9 in a way that every row, column, and 3x3 three three box has the numbers 1 through 9 exactly once. That means there will be no duplicates in any row, column, or 3x3 three three box. Very important point, Sudokus have one unique solution which allows us to solve them deductively, that is by eliminating all of the incorrect answers and eventually arriving at the correct answer. If you imagine a Sudoku that had two solutions, you would eventually reach a cell where you would not be able to eliminate all of their choices. You would therefore have to take a guess and just hope that it works. A proper Sudoku, provided that it's not over the top difficult, should not result in a situation where guessing is required to progress through the puzzle. Whenever you're down to two choices there should always be a correct choice an incorrect choice and hopefully a way to deduce which is which two particular techniques that I want to talk about in this video and the first technique I will discuss is called scanning the idea behind scanning is to take advantage of the rule that no row or column will have a duplicate of any digit so what I do is I'm going to pick a specific number and I'm going to look for a 3x3 three three box that doesn't yet have that number and typically I start with 1 and work in ascending order 1 through 9 so starting with the 1's I'm going to look for a box that does not have a 1 and I'm going to focus my attention on this center box here. Uh, what I will do is I will look at the column that already has a 1 in it and I'm going to shade upwards um, into the box that I'm targeting. And, and those shaded boxes are cells that cannot be a 1. So now there are two cells that are unshaded and still need a number. The 1 is going to go in there. However, if I'm going to fill in one of those cells with a 1, that would still require a guess. And... Um, if scanning works, there are, ideally will only be one blank cell where the digit can go because that means you won't have to guess where that digit goes. Uh, but because we have two choices, let's skip that and see if we can get any better results with the twos. Now there are many twos to choose from, but I am going to focus on the twos in the top two rows, and I'm going to target the center box, which is currently missing a two. So since the top row already has a two, we can say that the shaded blanks in that row cannot be a two. We can also extend that logic to the second row, such as that. And now we have two choices left. However, because one of the columns already has a two, uh, that leaves us with only one blank cell that can accept the two, and that one remaining cell must be the answer, so we can fill in the two. And just so that we can distinguish the numbers that were given by the puzzle against the cells that we have solved, the numbers that the puzzle gave us will be in black and the solved numbers will be in blue. Now pay attention to the top set of 3x3 three three boxes. Between the left box, center box, and right box, each box has exactly one 2, and each 2 appears on a different row. There's a 2 on the first row, a 2 on the second row, and a 2 on the third row. Once you have completed the puzzle, this will actually be true of every number in every Sudoku. I am going to now take a look at the threes. Now, scanning the threes doesn't identify any more three by three boxes where we can pin it down to only one cell, but I'll just draw your attention to the middle left box and note that there are two places that the three can go. It can certainly be useful to note that both possibilities for the three are in the same column. I consider this a slightly more advanced application of scanning, and I will discuss this in detail when I talk about intermediate level puzzles. But for now, let's proceed to the fours. 
I should mention that there is no set order in which you have to solve the cells, as long as you're able to target a 3x3 three three box that needs the digit you're looking for, by all means go ahead with that. I will choose to look at the center group of 3x3 three three boxes, since I noticed that two columns already contain a 4, so I can scan those 4s upwards into that top box, and that leaves only one place for the 4 to go in that box, so we can go ahead and plug that 4 in. And the great thing about scanning is that when you solve a cell, that will often open up many more possibilities and clues for where that digit will go in all of the other 3x3 three three boxes. To show you what I mean, I'm going to use scanning in a slightly different way. Rather than try to target a 3x3 three three box that is missing a 4, I'm instead going to target a column that is missing a 4, specifically the rightmost column here. This column gives us a choice of three blank cells, and we still need a, to include a 4 in there somewhere but this top cell can't be a 4 because there's already a 4 in that row. There's also a 4 in the box which prevents us from putting a 4 in that cell. Uh, the second cell uh, right over here can also not be a 4 because there is a 4 in that row and that leaves only one option to plug in the 4. The 4 must be in this third cell. This is going to allow us to do yet another scan towards the left using the four we've just filled in. In the bottom left box, we already have two blank cells on the target row, but since one of the columns already has a four, uh, we can eliminate that cell and the four goes into the only blank cell left. So we can plug a four in there and we can use that four to look at the box above that. So we'll scan that and notice that the middle left box um, only has one place where the 4 can go, so we'll plug that in here and we'll perform a final scan to the right to see where our last 4 goes. And it's in that cell that is currently unshaded. And now we have every 4 accounted for in the puzzle. That means every row, every column, and every 3x3 three three box now contains a 4. We're ready to try the same strategy on our 5s now. The puzzle has given us all of the fives, or sorry, almost all of the fives. In fact, only two of them are missing. Uh, but I'm going to focus my attention on the center box where there currently is no five. Now, there are three blank cells. However, two rows surrounding the box has a five in it. So we can eliminate two of the choices, and that means the five goes into the one choice that is remaining. And that's what I mean when I say scanning is a deductive, or solving any Sudoku, regardless of strategy, is deductive. Because the goal is to eliminate all of the incorrect possibilities, leaving only the correct cell. Uh, so in this case, because there are three blank cells, what we're going to do is eliminate the two incorrect choices based on the fact that those rows already have a five in it. That means the five must be in the one cell that is remaining. Uh, solving a Sudoku is a matter of using the scanning technique on all of the digits, 1 through 9, and starting back at 1 if you need to. You can solve this particular puzzle completely by repeating the strategy for all of the remaining digits. Uh, but to change things up a bit, I'm going to leap ahead and show a couple more concepts that should come in handy. The second strategy I will discuss is called completing the unit. Now a unit is any piece of the grid that must have exactly one of every digit, one through nine, without any duplicates. That is a row, column, or three by three box. Deeper into the puzzle you will reach a stage where you have eight of the nine squares in a unit filled. At that point you can insert the number that is missing from that unit into the ninth cell. So I have circled four cells that can make use of this, and I'll work from top to bottom. So starting with this top circle, it is the only cell that is blank within its 3x3 three three box, as well as the only blank within its column. Effectively, what you can do is identify what number is missing. In this case, it is the 3. Uh, there's no 3 in that box, so you can plug a 3 in that cell. Now moving on to the second circle, which is the only cell in its row. The only number missing from the row is a 3, so we can plug in a 3 in that cell. The cell here is the only blank cell in its column. The only number missing is a 1, so we can insert a 1 there. And finally, a box that is only missing a 3, so let's plug that in. I am going to jump ahead to nearly the end of the puzzle, which only has six cells remaining. Uh, that is three rows that are each missing two cells. 
and I'm going to extend the idea of completing the unit to cases where more than one cell in a unit is still blank. So let's look at the top row. Two cells from the row are missing here and here, and the row is still missing a 3 or a 9. So those are going to be the two numbers that will go into the cells. However, we do not know which cell is going, or which number is going to go into which cell. We're going to need to look at the 3x3 three three boxes as well as the columns to see if we can get any more clues. Well, the right cell is in a box that already contains a 3, so that one can't be a 3. That leaves the only possibility for that cell to be a 9, and that means the other cell on the left is going to be our 3. Likewise, if we look at the second row, again, it's missing two cells a and two numbers, which are a 1 and a 7. However, the left box already contains a 7, and there's already a 7 in the column where the left cell is. So it would be incorrect to place a 7 in that cell. That leaves the only possibility a 1, and that's going to make the other cell on the right-hand side a 7. So each, uh, each box now has one cell missing from its 3x3 three three box, and the left-hand box is missing a 9, and the right-hand box is missing a 1. So once we fill those in, we have finished the puzzle. And we have successfully solved the Sudoku. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you're looking for a little bit of practice, I highly recommend checking out crazydad.com. They have a seemingly unlimited supply of puzzles to test out these strategies. I look forward to hearing your feedback, and I thank you for watching.